Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl from the back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to the concept of worship. What is worship? So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Many people talk to us about worship. They talk to us about their particular faith. And they will tell us that in our worship, we do this or we do that. And at the same time, I would wonder exactly what is it that Allah would accept? Almighty God. What does he accept? What does he consider to be worship? Well, we're going to find that out in this episode because we're going to talk about a word called deen. Deen. What is deen? Often it's translated as the word in English, religion, religion. But it's so much more than religion. Actually, deen means the way, the way of something. How is, how is the way? Somebody asks you, how is your deen? They would be asking you, really, you know, what is your life all about? What do you, what do you do in your life? And what we find out here now is that the only deen that Allah is going to accept is going to be the one that he's prescribed. And we've talked about this in previous programs when he said, in Adina in the Islam, that's in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 19. He's saying that for sure the way with Allah is submission and surrender to him in peace. Now we've already talked about the word Islam and we understand it means peaceful surrender to God uh, in uh, sincerity. And we've understood that Allah means the only one worthy to be worshipped. We've understood this to be the same God of Adam and Abraham, Moses, Jesus Christ, peace be upon them all, and Muhammad. And now we're going to work on this word deen and get a better understanding of what it is. Now, could there be such a thing as different ways to worship God? Al-ibadah is a comprehensive term for everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with, whether it is speech and actions, whether it is inwardly, or outwardly. And this is what makes Islam to be a lifestyle. And this is what is meant by Islam is a lifestyle. Every single thing that you do can be ibadah. There are two main categories of ibadah. Ibadah mahda wa ghayru mahda. Ritualistic from the get-go. Fi asl mashru'iyyatiha ibadah. Zay eh? As-salah. Salah is ibadah. Zakah. Hajj. Fasting. Sadaqah. It is from the get-go, the evidence was established that this is an act of worship. Praying five times, aqimu salah wa zakah So ritualistic from the beginning. The other type is non-ritualistic. But things which you do, if you formulate an intention, you turn it into ibadah. Like sleeping, eating, working. If you add an intention to these acts, it turns into ibadah. It's not within the act, it's added to the act. So did we understand the categorization of ibadah here? Ritualistic from the get-go. عبادات محضة من البداية اللي هي القلبية والقولية والبدنية والمالية عبادة with the heart عبادة with the tongue عبادة with the body عبادة with the money and non-ritualistic from the get-go which is everything else that you do 
everything else that you do. But this will not become ibadah without the external element. What is the external element? The knee. But if it is ritualistic, listen, two conditions. Two conditions. What are those? Al-ikhlas wal mutaba'ah. Sincerity and adherence. You must do it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you must do it the way the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usallim. Pray exactly like you see me praying. We have not seen him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we have the sunnah. We have the hadith. خُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take your rituals after me. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ تَوَضَّأَ نَحْوَ وُضُوءِ هَذَا Whoever makes wudu exactly like my wudu. عمل Ritualistic. From the get-go, you must learn how it's done. Why? Because صلى الله عليه وسلم made it crystal clear. كما في حديث عائشة رضي الله عنها في الصحيحين. The wording of الإمام مسلم. من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. If you do an act, if you do an act of worship, in a way that I did not do, it's rejected. And to give you an example of that. Uh, I'm reminded of a story about a lady who was sitting there one day and her child came up to her and said, Mom, I love you. Mom, I really love you. She said, well, that's wonderful. How about going out in the kitchen and washing the dishes for me? Because my, uh, you know, my arthritis is bothering me right now. And, uh, you know, I have this uh, blood sugar problem and everything. And it's hard for me to go out in the kitchen and wash the dishes. So you really love me. Go wash the dishes. Oh, I don't want to do that. But I love you. So, but if you really love me, go wash the dishes for me. No, mom, I brought you some chocolate candies instead. She said, I can't eat that. With my sugar diabetes, if I eat this, it might kill me. I can't eat that. She said, I know, but I like it, so I'll eat it for you. And I love you. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, as this didn't make any sense at all, in the same way, if you said to Allah, Look, Allah, I don't want the religion you want from me. I'll make up my own. I'll just do what I want to do and tell you to accept it from me. Is that going to work? And no. And we found this out in previous programs when Allah said in the Quran about this subject. Chapter 3, verse 85. Whoever desires a religion other than the one that Allah has prescribed for them, the deen of Allah, then he's never going to accept it from them. And then hereafter they'll be with the losers. So to understand this deen is very important is the part of understanding the beauties of Islam. Allah has given us the complete and total deen. We know the deen of Allah. He said that he has completed his favor upon us by revealing to us a complete and total way of life. And that way of life is Islam. The submission and surrender to him in sincerity. And this is what we understand from those words, what I just said to you. Doing what he wants you to do his way. This means you could neither add to nor take away from this deen and still be successful. The only way to be successful is to learn and understand this deen and then apply it to the best of your ability. Now what would happen though if somebody said, well, yeah, that's all well and good. We have the Quran. We have the teachings of Muhammad. They're very nice. It's good. You pray five times a day and you give charity and you fast Ramadan and you have something called Hajj, pilgrimage. That's all well and good. But still, 
I think we need something else. I think, you know, maybe, or I want to do it another way. I think, you know, let us make some alterations, add some stuff to it. And what would happen? Now we want to talk about that a little bit. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the exact living representation of what Islam is supposed to be all about. What he did, how he did it, his life is the example for us, the Muslims. So we've talked about this in detail in other programs, but I want to refer to that because we are talking about the Quran and the Sunnah. Those two things are very vital to understand what I'm going to explain next. There is a saying in Islam about innovations, those things which are newly invented matters. And while I will agree with you that as time progresses, we discover new things and some things are very important and vital actually to our lives to incorporate these new things we discover. For instance, in my case, I enjoy something called a microwave oven. You know why? That's how I heat up my coffee. <laughs> we also enjoy traveling in airplanes and trains and automobiles. So these are innovations that are very necessary for us and we enjoy them very much. I would hate to think that we'd still have to travel on camels and have to build a huge fire just to warm up some tea. At the same time though, if we said we need to change our religion, incorporate things into it that didn't used to be there or take things out of it, this would be a pretty amazing thing to consider. Especially in lieu of the fact that Allah has revealed the verse that I just recited to you. When Allah said that he has conferred upon us his biggest favor by revealing a total deen for us. And this deen doesn't need anybody to change it because if they do then they're not accepting the one that he sent. And he said he perfected it. So it's perfected on that day. Al yawmul akmaltu lakum dinakum. This is clear. And nobody, nobody should add to or take away from this. Because if they do, what would happen? It wouldn't be the same deen anymore. Suppose somebody said to you, Okay, look, I got an idea. Why don't we just pray three times a day? It'd be a lot easier for us. And why don't we just pray... Uh, pray all together, you know, combine everything and make it real easy. Or somebody else might say, no, we don't pray enough. Let's make it so that people have to pray 10 times a day. Or once every hour, 24 hours a day, get up in the night and you have to wake up every hour on the hour and do that. That sounds very religious, like maybe a monk or something. Then somebody else might say, well, what about this fasting all the time? Let's just do 15 days. Or somebody else say, let's fast two months out of the year. And somebody else could say, why should we go all the way to Mecca to make our pilgrimage? Why don't we just make one of the pilgrimages to Disneyland? That'd be nice and a lot of fun for the kids too. Hmm? Or, hey, you know what? There's a real religious guy over here. Really, really nice guy. We really love him so much. He died, and there's his grave. Instead of going all the way to Mecca, we just go to this guy's grave and walk around there seven times instead of going to Mecca and call that, you know, a, a pilgrimage for us. What about that idea? Each and every one of these things may have an attraction for some people, and it may sound like it's a benefit. But remember what Allah said in the Quran. If anybody seeks after a deen other than the deen that he has revealed, he's not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, they're going to be with the losers. He said his deen is complete. So did you understand what this means? This means that it doesn't need you or I to add to or take away from it. Allah is not asking me to make up a religion. He's not asking me to make up a God. In fact, he's only asked me to do one thing, worship him on his terms. Listen carefully. He says that he's only created the jinn and human beings for the purpose to make ibadah, worship to him. Worship is for him. In fact, ibadah is a word in Arabic that's similar to the word slavery. To be a servant to him, serving him on his terms. Could you imagine a servant or a slave going up to the master and saying something like, Hey, you know what? 
Eh, you, you don't get your tea this morning. You're going to get it tonight. Take it or leave it. Hmm. <laughs> How far would that go? And you and I both know that would be a big problem. In the same way, if anybody tries to make up a religion other than the one that Allah revealed, Allah is not going to accept it. And in the hereafter, they'll be with the losers. So that's the importance of knowing this beauty of Islam, the deen of Islam itself. In fact, the word deen is synonymous with the word Islam. Very interesting video. At the end of the day, I guess to summarize is worship has already been defined for us by God. And what we're supposed to do is worship him according to to what um, what has been said in the religious book and yeah I guess that's the right way of doing things otherwise many people do things differently my question to you guys today is how do you worship God exactly other than just um, praying five times a day what are your other ways of worshiping God on a daily basis if there's something else that you guys do Feel free to comment in the comment section below and I'll appreciate. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.